OBS is of course my favorite live streaming and recording software that I've been using for a long time now, and I've made a lot of videos about it if you've been subscribed to the channel for any period of time within the past couple months. But sometimes with open source projects, something better comes along while still being the same thing. In fact, as of just a couple days ago, we now have a new version of OBS developed by the Streamlabs team, known for their Twitch alerts and their little widgets and overlays you can get for your live streams. That is actually really, really cool. So yes, Streamlabs has forked their own version of OBS called Streamlabs OBS, or as you can see in the URL, Slobs for short, uh, which is aimed to be easier to use while also providing direct integration for features that you'd otherwise have to set up, you know, uh, browser sources and things like that for, which is really awesome. So you just go to the URL in the description below and they also have a little Medium article detailing the features and things like that. This is still in beta. It will take some time for them to work out some kinks, which I'll, which I'll touch on in a second, but it's super easy to set up. Like I, I am not a fan of simplification and if you've seen my OBS masterclass, you've seen that I prefer using the advanced mode for everything and manually fine tuning settings. But I, I was taken aback with how easy it was to get the software set up. The actual initial configuration takes less than a minute as long as you don't have OBS running at the same time when you first set it up like I did. <laughs> and all of the overall like settings and stuff are really, really easy. When you first run it, it'll ask you to link your Twitch or YouTube account to actually integrate your Streamlabs account with them. And then it'll ask if you want to import any specific profiles from your existing OBS installation. You can either do that or skip it. It still imports them all anyway. It just, whichever one you select is the default. Unfortunately, it doesn't let you select a profile and a scene collection. So the scene collection was wrong for me, but that's okay. Uh, import your profile and you're pretty much good to go. Then you can start selecting which of the Streamlab widgets you want to introduced into your scene, which of course, if you already had browser sources, you'll need to get rid of them, but they make it super easy to set up when you tell it to, you know, add a, when you click to add a source to your, to your scene, instead of being, you know, into like a list of sources and things like that, they have a nice little GUI for it. And then you get to select from their list of widgets and it'll help you set that up automatically, which is really awesome. The overall, the, the UI is very attractive. It's very nice, very slick, very clean. It scales with Windows scaling very nicely, which is an issue for me with a lot of theming. Uh, it looks really good. They make a lot of it really easy to use, like just little details, like the, uh, the information bar at the bottom gives you information about your system resources, the frame rate, things like that. You have a button, a dedicated set of buttons to test your follow and host alerts and things like that right in there. And they have some really cool features like tabs for your Streamlabs dashboard built right into it. You have the editor, which is kind of your typical preview editor that is in OBS where you get to line things up and they actually give you measurements as far as like what size your sources are and where they're positioned and stuff, things that are not in normal OBS, which is really cool. There isn't studio mode though, which is kind of weird, but I noticed when a couple people were trying it the other day, they were missing studio mode, so eh. Uh, but again, this is designed to be super easy to use and set up. Uh, they've got a bunch of other features. Oh yeah, there, so you have the editor tab, then you have the live tab, which has an, uh, the Streamlabs event list, so you can keep an eye on you know who followed, who subbed, and what uh, whatever on Twitch, but also keeps your video preview there in all of your normal settings. Really awesome, really awesome. Uh, they've got a the video preview, the easier editor, the UI, like I said, is much simpler, easier to use. They have the recent event viewer. All of the Streamlabs overlays and things like that are widgets. Supposedly, they have uh, smart game-specific optimizations for your encoder, which are currently supports PUBG, Dota 2, CSGO, Destiny 2, and Fortnite. Don't know how well that works or how realistic that is, especially since Destiny 2 can't even be captured through game capture anyway, unless they've somehow gotten around that. <laughs> the the actual setup for detecting your stream settings is actually really cool. It just performs a complete auto check. It 
tests your connection to the Twitch servers, it tests your computer speed, and it just spits out a streaming configuration. And for me, it was different than what I would normally use. The bitrate was a bit lower. I think I was uploading videos, uh, but it chose NVENC. And then like in 1080p, and instead of scaling to 720p, it scaled to like 864p or something a little higher. So there's a little more detail preserved. And I had a couple people on my Discord server, we'll link in the description below, by the way, uh, who were testing it and said that they actually had a lot better performance with the auto settings generated by the Streamlabs version than what they were using before, which is really kind of neat. And then they have the library tab, which is a, a tab full of community generated content in terms of like overlays and layouts to where you can just integrate it from into your live stream directly within OBS, which is really awesome. They've got la layouts to, you know, have some text overlay spots for your alerts, webcam frame, things like that. A bunch of different theme ones. You can sort by which ones are most popular, things like that. That is really neat. There's also a feature which can add face masks or hats or stickers to your live stream, kind of like how Snapchat and Instagram filters do. Uh, this is a little weird, and apparently users who donate or contribute or whatever through Streamlabs can actually manually add those to you through the software. I haven't tested this myself, and it will probably need a lot of kinks to really be worked out before it's great. Uh, but it's certainly an interesting addition, and seeing things like that integrated more into the software is always really cool. Another weird thing is it doesn't seem to be picking up VST plugins at the moment. A couple people on my Discord server were trying to figure that out, and it appears to be ignoring actually installed VST plugins, and I saw a Reddit post about that as well. So, again, keep in mind that while this is still free and open source and built on normal OBS, it's still very much in development, and the core OBS functionality is, of course, constantly in development as well. But this is a really good job. Streamlabs has done some amazing work here, some work that I've really wanted to see done with OBS for a long time, and I am super impressed. Personally, I don't see myself using this most of the time. I'm probably going to do some test streams for it sometime in the next few months to really you know, get some live streams going again, but overall, I still prefer the manual control of doing everything advanced in normal OBS, but if you're looking for something that's easier to use, that's easier to take advantage of, you know, auto settings and a better UI and things like that, kudos to the Streamlabs team. I'm pretty darn impressed. Like, at this point, between all of the features that OBS itself is coming up with and the Streamlabs version of OBS, they're pretty much giving XSplit a run for their money at this point, which is pretty cool to see given how they dominated the scene for a little while there. So, just wanted to update you video, you videos? You guys are not videos. You, I make videos, but I'm, I don't make videos to be watched by videos. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to make an update for you guys talking about this. Uh, for the most part, the good thing about this software is the UI is pretty self-explanatory, so if you're already familiar with OBS, you're already going to know what to do, and if you've watched my course, you'll pretty much know where everything is. Like, a couple settings are in a couple different places, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So I don't see the need to do a whole lot of tutorials and things like that for it. Uh, but if you, if there's enough demand for specific tutorials or for a brief walkthrough series, I'm up for it, I guess, because this version is pretty neat. So, links to it will be in the description down below not affiliated with them or anything, of course. And if you like the video, hit the like button, share it out, let people know what you thought about the Streamlabs OBS version, and let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I'm Epos Vox, here to make tech easier and more fun. If you want to learn normal OBS, go check out my master class, also linked in the description below. It teaches you everything you need to know about OBS. And otherwise, I'll see you next time. This video is sponsored by viewers like you. Our videos would not be possible without the generosity of those of you who contribute to one of our fan funding options, be it DonorBox, Twitch subscriptions, direct contributions via PayPal, or Patreon. To join our inner circle and get behind-the-scenes looks at videos, go to eposvox.com support to learn more, and join us on Discord at eposvox.com Discord. Thanks!